Hello, come on up. Welcome. And he's stepping on the computer. Okay. <laughs> um, first question from darkhorseemissions.com today. Do you think there is a way, either through biological procedures or statistical studies, to determine conclusively if a cardiac or heart event or cardiac or heart events in the aggregate are related to the vaccine? Also, how are we able to distinguish vaccine harm from an actual COVID harm? These distinctions seem like they'd be helpful to settle some of the fighting. Finally, do your instincts tell you we will eventually turn the corner and go back to relative normal? Um, I wish my instincts told me that. Yeah, I my don't, instincts I, tell me the opposite yeah. uh, on, on the last question at the moment. I don't think we're going back to normal, unfortunately. Now, maybe this is an adaptive valley and we establish a new normal on the basis that we've just learned how much danger we're in because our institutions all suck. That would be great. Um, from the point of view of, was the question about autopsies or was the question in living people? It doesn't say it. Do you think there's a way, either through biological procedures or statistical studies, to determine conclusively if a cardiac or heart event or cardiac or heart events in the aggregate are related to the vaccine, how can we distinguish vaccine harm from actual COVID harm? Yes. Uh, there are several different ways. One, you've got the distinction between uh, 2020 and 2021 and beyond, which tells us a lot about that distinction to so, the extent that you can look at the, the data that distinguishes the events. So that's the statistical, that's the aggregate. Um, I have wondered this question about individual events a lot, and I gather that there are some, I do not know the specifics, but I think Dr. McCullough has argued that myocarditis looks different from COVID versus the vaccines, and I don't, I don't know the specifics. I don't, that is the only one of these, though, that I have heard that someone who knows his stuff and has looked carefully is saying, actually, it manifests differently, the, 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 yeah. the, the, the way that clinically we can tell so, if we're looking. There's a lot of work that has to be done, and unfortunately, we are, the work that is being done is being done in an environment that is not conducive to discovery, because... There are so many dogs that people have in the fight that, you know, they want to elevate the harm of COVID so that the harm of the uh, inoculations is uh, drowned out, for example. So that's a perverse incentive. I think the key thing to understand is that you have one set of harms that actually does not inherently distinguish between the shots and the disease. Spike is produced by the shots and the disease. And to the extent that spike is bad, you can get inflammation as a result of spike circulating in the bloodstream. Okay? That is very different than the invasion of heart cells that then go on to be destroyed by T cells. Right? And so to the extent that what we are seeing are people who have had their hearts, and by the way, it won't just be their hearts. We call it myocarditis in the heart, but the destruction of tissue when cells are invaded by the mRNA and then destroyed by the immune system, that will happen in all tissues. But but the cells can obviously be invaded by SARS-CoV-2. It doesn't have to be. The question is, do they? And this was the point I was trying to, some to make. some degree, right? It's, There's myocarditis associated with COVID as well. Right, but myocarditis means inflammation. Okay, that's not. The, I'm not saying that SARS-CoV-2 doesn't ever invade a heart cell, but there's actually little reason for it to. And so my guess is, since we're not talking about a completely synthetic virus, we're talking about something that was taken from the wild and enhanced, mm -hmm. right? right? I think the chances are low that it invades the heart liberally because it has no reason to do it. It doesn't help it spread, and actually it gets in the way of it spreading. So the... Um, the, the confusion here is that myocarditis is not a specific disease. It is a symptom. It is a symptom okay. of a couple different things. It could be a symptom of irritation or slight damage. And it, and it lumps mechanisms. Right. And so the point, what is special about the mRNA shots in particular is that they are indiscriminate in terms of what they get into. Not even the DNA shots are indiscriminate because the DNA shots utilize this adenovirus and the adenovirus has its own preferences about what cells to invade and invading the heart is not likely to be useful to it mm -hmm. so okay. so the point is look 
maybe there's myocarditis with COVID alone, right? But that just means inflammation. The damage that is signaled by the inflammation in the heart is um, largely associated with the mRNA shots and the hypothesis, not just mine, several other people have come up with related versions of this hypothesis, but the hypothesis is that the mRNAs get into cells indiscriminately because they're just covered in a fat that has an affinity for cells and it gets into them. That's how it's designed to work. Right? And the only limitation on where it does that comes from the locality of the shot. And we know that that doesn't keep it from flowing around, whether that's because of an aspiration issue or because they just naturally leak into the body or both. And so the damage from the mRNA shots that are getting into heart cells, into myocytes, and causing those cells to be destroyed, those cells then unlike other tissues of the body, not every other tissue, but unlike almost all of the tissues of the body, the heart does not heal, right? It scars. And so you, there is presumably a particular danger in the phase where you have effectively an open wound on the inside of your heart in the vasculature, right? That wound is a particular vulnerability. You will be better off after it scars. Is this diagnosable in some... Um, and hold on, this is true for the entire, all cardiovascular vessels, all circulatory vessels, right? They do not heal, they scar, which means at, um, so the, whatever we were calling this, the stuff at the beginning, one of the symptoms that people were talking about for COVID oh, the, was the, what the it's got some it strange names, but it's like basically this numbness at the, the fingers, um, you know, from, oh, from COVID. I almost had it, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, Chill blains. Oh, that's the toes. That, that's what. Well, whatever. Um, that that may precisely be about um, the circulatory vessels at the capillary level, where it's you know one red blood cell wide, uh, be, you know having scarred as a result of of uh, the the virus, and then you know becoming not um, you know not. I want to say conducive in, to flow, infusible, defusible, something profusible, profusible, yes. Um, I think, that's, I think that's slightly different um, because okay. what we know is that spike causes the um, clumping of blood cells, spike itself. Mm. So that doesn't necessarily require scarring. Now there it, does, is, it doesn't require it, right? Yep. There is vulnerability of all of the circulatory vessels to being invaded by the mRNA. And then once invaded, they presumably transcribe the spike protein and they get attacked by... Um, T cells that view them as infected. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is there a way to be sure? Yeah. I think on autopsy, there is a way to be almost sure, right? In other words, on autopsy, and maybe this can be done with a sophisticated scan like a CAT scan, one can view that there is damage. My understanding from people who have looked deeply into this issue is that there's something akin to third degree burns on the inside of the heart, right? Now, those burns are unlikely to be due to anything else. And the fact of them being the result of this can be diagnosed if you don't get there too late, right? If the event happens, you get this wound from the vaccination, the most likely time for you to suffer a cardiac arrest is presumably soon, right? Um, and the, the longer you make it, the longer you're likely to make it. I would love to hear a cardiologist evaluate that, but in terms of just the basic biology of the system, that's what you would expect. The wound yep. is more dangerous than the scar. The scar is less useful than the original tissue. Mm -hmm. But um, but the point is you will be at some intermediate phase where you will have cells that have been destroyed and eliminated and are just gone, right? I mean, imagine you had a burn. Some cells are just completely destroyed. Some cells are hanging out on the edge. And so the question is, is there a concentration of an indicator of uh, these cells having been producing spike protein in the form of some cells that are there having spike on their surface and this sort of thing? So from the point of view of nailing it down, that's a guess as to how you would do it. Somebody who understands cardiology well should evaluate that and fine tune it and mm -hmm. or maybe it's wrong and then that person should tell us how you would do it but yes i yeah. believe an autopsy can do it short of an autopsy you know you don't exactly want to go biopsying the heart 
right? That's a danger in and no. of itself. Yeah. Um, but I do believe you could certainly, with autopsies, get a bead on what the pathology looks like and how frequently it is the result of a uh, a vaccine injury. And yeah. then in living people, happening. you could infer. Right. Uh, well, it is beginning to happen. There's, there's this big German data set, um, which uh, is quite alarming. Anyway, you can look at uh, Dr. Malone's um, substack, which points to this uh, German study. Um, but there, it is beginning to come out now. We are seeing some autopsy stuff. But yes, for a long time, they were avoiding doing autopsies, I think, because they didn't want to know. Well, and I mean, I, th this is this is one of the core questions, right, th that we've been asked here. And everyone who's thinking about this should want to know the answer because, you know, healthy young men collapse on the field and, um, you know, we don't know. And there's all sorts of speculation. But when we know that we're not being told enough even to ask the right questions about what's happening, like, well, the, the only thing we have for sure other than possibly the kinds of stuff that you're talking about developing here is 2020 versus 2021 and later with regard to deaths associated with COVID-like stuff. But we know that dying with and dying of has been conflated. And we also know that the evolution of the virus has done all sorts of weird and wacky things. And, you know, Omicron was less likely to kill you outright uh, than what was circulating in 2020. And maybe whatever the crazy one is called now, X.1, whatever it is, um, is is less yet, but you know, maybe longer term it's got more risk. Like we, we don't know the answers to any of these questions. And until and unless we actually do, someone's start developing exactly these sorts of ways to distinguish between, you know, was that vaccine, was that COVID? This, the true story will never be told because the you know to the degree that there are data that are takeable and then analyzable forever. Once you have the data, you can analyze them if they were taken well, you know, infinitely. But the ability to access the data will disappear. They are disappearing. They're, if they're not being taken, they're disappearing. And then, oh, sorry guys, I guess it's our version of the story because you don't have another one. Yeah, it it uh, harkens back to the discussion we were having in the main podcast where. You know, none of this is all that hard to do, right? If you want to find out whether these inoculations are having this effect, you can study it. There's no mystery about how you would do this. Yeah. Um, and what we are frustratingly downstream of is the obligation that we embarrass the system into functioning, right? That we embarrass it, that we ask so many questions about people keeling over on uh, this field or that field and that we, you know, insist on autopsies and that we require mm -hmm. the press to report these things. And it just shouldn't be this way. The, the point is the system has become an obstacle to understanding. It claims to be the source of understanding. It has become an obstacle to understanding because it has higher priorities and it's not supposed to. Mm -hmm.